So uh, what we're going to be doing today is looking at uh, spring wildflowers and most of those are grouped in a group of plants that are known as spring ephemerals and uh, they're called spring ephemerals because they're only here briefly. They, they come up before the trees leaf out uh, and when they get that full sunlight they're able to utilize that to produce a lot of food and they put that into their uh, storage systems underground and most of them have bulbs or tubers that are pretty large and that food is stored and then the leaves go away shortly after the leaves come out on the trees and you won't know that they're there anymore. A number of the uh, spring ephemerals are sensitive to photo period and so they won't open their flowers until the sun comes out and uh, the uh, trout lilies are one of those and that's that's this this white flower here. They're called trout lilies because of the modeling on the leaves. Looks kind of like a, a lake trout. Um, and uh, it's also called dogtooth violet and a couple of other names, which isn't really appropriate because it is actually in the lily family, but uh, some people call them dog, dogtooth violets. Um, but anyway, it's a, it's a plant that responds to sunlight. And so if you come out here and it's cloudy, they'll look like this. If it, the sun comes out and you come back an hour later, they'll be in full bloom. Uh, and the, the flowers curl back and you see the yellow stamen sticking out and the petals will be curled back. If the clouds come in again, they'll close up and be hanging down like that. But there's a number of things like blood roots and other things that respond to the, the sun the same way. Spring beauties are the same way. Um, so if you really want to see a lot of good flowering, you want to come out on a sunny day to, to see them. And Dutchman's breeches is another um, example of uh, the big bumblebees pollinate this thing and when you look at these flowers the the, fl the end of the flower where they go in is where this yellow is and it's just really tightly closed and it takes a pretty powerful critter to open that up and get inside and so if it wasn't for those big early uh, queen bumblebees that are out and about you wouldn't have these things pollinate and they wouldn't be producing any seed and and that's sort of a good lesson for anybody who's growing a natural planting like this in their yard is that where you find the queen butter or the queen bumblebees spending the winter is in this leaf litter. So oftentimes people will clean up their, their flower beds in the fall, you know, because they want them nice and neat in spring. Well, that's where the bumblebees spend the winter time. The whole point is that if you look at if you look at a map of, or a graph of flowering bloom times in the woods, if you have a natural healthy oak woodland, you should have uh, around this time of the year, you should have this bump of blooming with all these spring ephemerals starting to flower. Then starting about maybe uh, late May, early June, you should have this summer bloom period come up that spans the whole middle of summer and then declines and then starting in about August you should have the fall, the golden rod, golden rods and uh, late flowering things. So you should have these three peaks. So our woodland, you should be able to come out here anytime during the growing season and find something that's in bloom. It's not going to be as uh, concentrated as the spring ephemeral stuff. It'll be much more scattered, but there's always uh, things blooming.